Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for joining today's webinar. So the topic that we'll be discussing today is the Aviva Edge Enterprise for Water and Wastewater Industry. It's not a technical session. Well, it's more addressed to managers and sales department where we'll be discussing the industry challenges, uh, the Edge to Enterprise approach or concept, the value proposition, as well as benefits for the water and wastewater utilities. The speaker of today's session is the Managing Director of AITS, Abdullah Abdullah, who will be guiding us for the coming 40 minutes. So from my end, I just wish you an informative session, and please be reminded that you can type any question you have during the session in the question box, and definitely we will answer it at the end of this webinar. Now I just wish you a, an informative session, and I will leave you in safe hands with my colleague, Abdullah. Hi. Hi, Nader. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, basically. Um, welcome to another uh, webinar by AITS. Uh, glad to have everyone with us. Um, today, as Nadir has said, uh, we're we're starting um, a new a new type of webinars uh, related to uh, a concept, uh, the edge to enterprise concept. So today we're starting with water and wastewater. Uh, as part of a bigger campaign that we're doing, I, I believe you have received links to uh, download white papers, to download the uh, certain brochures, etc. And we're gonna follow up follow up on this in next weeks and coming weeks uh, about the concept of edge to enterprise in food and beverage, in oil and gas, and, and various industries. Before I start the presentation, I would really like to invite you uh, to just uh, uh, type in the chat box, if you don't mind. Uh, when you hear the first year of Edge to Enterprise, what do you think about? What does it mean for you? What value you think an Edge to Enterprise strategy can create? Okay. And what challenges you think it's uh, that must be addressed uh, when adopting an Edge to Enterprise strategy? Um, it can be general or it can be specifically about water with water and we're going to discuss uh, your comments uh, at the end of this presentation. <clears throat> so uh, today we're going to go briefly about the known or let's say uh, the common industry challenges today and I mean the water waste water industry okay and specifically we're going to talk a little bit about the information challenges across the chain and hence uh, the need of uh, an edge to enterprise strategy to uh, uh, to to adapt to overcome those types of challenges and specifically the information challenges that are represented and we're going to focus on on a particular area what we call the decision support systems okay uh, What's, because when you speak from edge to enterprise, okay, uh, it might mean different things to different people. So we're gonna focus on how, uh, let's say, an enterprise system uh, would look like in uh, in a water in a water or water or wastewater utility or a municipality, for example. Today, the, this industry. If you read the mission statements of any water or wastewater utility or municipality that is in charge of distributing water or uh, reclaiming uh, wastewater, uh, they would definitely, the first, uh, uh, the, the first priority for many of them is to safeguard the public health. And by that, we mean uh, making sure that they deliver proper and uh, proper quality water to their uh, subscribers and we and collect properly collect and uh, treat the wastewater uh, from uh, from different premises and houses okay at the same time ensuring customer satisfaction ensuring the serviceability ensuring competitiveness uh, and many other aspects uh, that customers are when they subscribe to a particular utility okay uh, or they expect certain certain service or level of services from them 
while definitely where we talk about water and today water i think it's we can not i think we can live with anything without anything except water so we need we need water we need water in, in every aspect of our life so uh, so this is the most vital uh, commodity that the utility uh, would deliver today or uh, or or not only utility any 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 supplier would deliver today okay why we protect the environment against any leak uh, be it wastewater leakage or even uh, leak in transmission pipelines or distribution pipeline because any uh, any water that is leaked is a losses and in an area in the middle east okay you know how sacred water is so if you look at this mission statement mission statement these are mainly uh, known okay there's nothing new i can say uh, and this this has been the case with them since they started i guess and with that they face many challenges and there are many aspects in the wastewater environment okay especially i can say in our region and the water uh, the, the water source stress okay um, we deal with many desalination plants uh, we deal with many um, salty water wells so the source of water that we have is not 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 so perfect i can say there's plenty of aging infrastructure especially in old cities and old quarters in different cities uh, 50 or 60 years old infrastructure and not not designed for an edge to enterprise uh, or for for an information collection or data collection uh, i can say um, strategy with that, you you get more regulations from from government. Okay, we see how Diwa is strict at the National Water Company in Saudi, uh, in the Saudi Saudi Water Ministry of Water, etc. Okay, how strict they are and the regulations that they are imposing. Okay, definitely, as we said, quality, safety, and compliance. And one important factor is the generation shift. And when we say generation shift, uh, not so long ago, 15, 20 years ago, uh, our expectation from the technology is way, way, way different than what we expect the technology to deliver today. And uh, the operator, if we have an operator today sitting behind the desktop, we don't think our kids or who are maybe today in unis or at schools would be sitting behind the desktop just idle for eight hours and operating a water plant. So they expect to be mobile, they expect to have more insights, more data. There's a generation, generation shift all while this, this experience uh, for, for operation and maintenance activities is all really in the heads of the, the current generation who is now operating and maintaining and we need to make sure how we can really uh, benefit from this experience and this knowledge can be transferred uh, through systems uh, to the current generation it goes without saying capital expenditure is always a problem pre-covid post-covid it's always a problem okay operation efficiency um you ask any CEO today, this is their number one, I can say, quality, uh, number one KPI. How can I improve my operation efficiency across the chain? Uh, and definitely, this can be achieved by better performance, higher reliability and availability of assets. And as I was saying uh, earlier, the evolution of the, their current workforce and their capabilities, uh, how we can maintain how we can benefit from previous experience of the people to of the previous uh, pre previous generation sorry to the new generation with their visions of of work how they want to see work all while okay we hear about technology trends the cloud iot mobility big data predictive analytics etc etc okay so we live in this world today, 
okay and i think these are kind of challenges for more mo let's say i can say all the industries not only water waste water but specific, specifically water waste water because as i said they deliver the most important commodity uh, today uh, for the human beings so how we can use this technology trends to benefit or to overcome the challenges and achieve high operational efficiency etc and how an edge to enterprise strategy can help uh, achieve that all right uh, one of the biggest favor that uh, covid 19 has offered us today is the faster adaptation of a cloud faster adaptation of mobile solution of remote working of data availability at a certain stage at a certain point of time anywhere in the world uh, this is it's a huge step a huge leap forward a huge fast track that has uh, opened our eyes to to cloud for instance many of us was resisting a cloud today cloud has become uh, very important super important etc etc what we care more about in in our world in our i can say automation uh, uh, industry 4.0 you call it okay as the challenges of data of information because as i as i said we need faster access anywhere okay uh, so the challenges that we have in collecting this data in, in, in a typical water resource environment okay as all water utilities they, they deal with a geographically distributed uh, assets from the water sources to treatment plants to the water networks and maybe desalination plants and then the wastewater networks and collection and the treatment they are distributed they deal with cities and sometimes they deal with states okay so co collecting this data is by itself challenging add to it the different data sources the different types okay if you ask me 10 years ago eight years ago okay i, I can say well, i have two types of data it's either coming through an rtu or through a plc okay an rtu maybe huh, maybe the mp if I'm lucky, uh, PLC, standard automation protocols, uh, known data structure, etc. Today we deal with much more open systems, much more, sorry, much more diverse systems. Today we deal with IoT. IoT by itself is not at a certain standardization level yet. However, it is in the water wastewater environment. You find plenty today of data loggers, IoT ready. Okay called IoT ready, they connect to a certain cloud, think somewhere you have no idea what is what. Okay, getting this data outside their systems is by itself a challenge, uh, so on and so forth. Um, more than that, not all data today, operational data, is available uh, through the RTUs or through PLCs, or if, if, let's say desalination plan DCS. There are plenty of non instrument instrumented data okay uh, information that's available maybe with the operator on his sheet, uh, sheet of paper okay so there are certain non-operation data that's not available today for us in the automation systems add to it the cyber security challenges and the security of this data okay we deal with one network of maybe a plc that can shut down and I shut down a server farm sitting a few thousand kilometers away. This is a real challenge. So, having said that, for us, if you ask me today, that's why I asked you at the beginning, what, what does Edge to Enterprise mean to you? For me, if I want to explain it in a nutshell, for me, an Edge to Enterprise strategy is a if it's to offer me anything, it should offer me a single source of truth. And I mean by that is I need to make sure that the data I have at the edge 
edge, whether the PLC, the HMI, uh, etc., or the sensor. I can get this data, connect to it, collect it, store it, make sure it's correct, analyze it, and act upon it. I want to make sure that it's the correct data across these all levels. Okay, I don't want to uh, live in a world where I'm making a decision based on maybe a human error by an operator. Okay, or maybe uh, uh, a wrong. Uh, I understood the context of data from a data logger uh, differently. So I made an assumption that this means that, or this means uh, this means A. It might mean B. Okay, so for me, an edge to enterprise strategy is nothing. I'm sorry, not nothing. More, most important part of it is it offers me a single source of truth. So I connect, collect, and historize. And the funny thing is that we used to explain this uh, um, uh, this slide, and we used to say the two major historian systems are Wonder Historian and OSI Soft. So OSI Soft now welcome to the family of Aviva. Uh, so today we're talking about an Aviva historian, which can be anything, OSI or Wonderware, etc. So just this is just a small comment. On the analysis side, let's say I connected data and collected it and historized it. Okay. Uh, on the analysis side, in water, I need I might need to do hydraulic algorithms, hydraulic hydraulic modeling. Okay, a predictive analysis of assets my assets and I'm gonna elaborate on that more okay and as I said to make sure I have a valid data data validation alarm rationalization reconciliation of data and clean data cleansing okay all of those are important through the strategy because accordingly when I analyze I need to act and when I say by act what I mean by act here and our today's topic is that I want to make sure that if I if I need to follow certain process, okay, this process has to has to be properly followed, okay. If I need to analyze data, I might need it on the cloud. I don't want it anywhere, okay. I want to be mobile. I don't want I don't want to be present in the office where I get access to data, okay. So the mobility part of it is on data collection side as well as, as well as on data analysis side, and that's what we gonna focus on. So if we, we want to map, if we want to map this to the known, I think most of our attendees today, they are familiar with, with Aviva and Aviva products and what AIPS is offering. So if we, if we want to map this today to uh, to Aviva, you are aware of the edge part of it, okay? Which is in touch HMI, Aviva Edge. Etc., which is on the on the production line side, sorry, on the pump stations, on the on the data locus side, etc. Uh, let's say five years ago or ten years ago, our our objective was to collect this data and have it in central control room. So for us, that was the enterprise system, central control room. I have data, I have my alarms, I have etc. as is my enterprise system. From from our pure automation perspective, the enterprise system was the central control. Okay, it's no longer the case today. The enterprise has been extended beyond the SCADA today. So if, if you if you ask about and what enterprise means today, it means cloud, maybe certain people cloud. It might might need it might mean integrating with other enterprise systems or, or IT systems. It might mean um, a predictive analytics or predictive maintenance. Okay, bridging the gap between maintenance and operation. It might mean uh, uh, mobility, as I said. So it might mean workflow. It's plenty of extension. To the central control room. So a central control room today is not only uh, for real-time control and monitoring. It's much more than that. There are four pillars I want to talk to you about today. How we can extend 
this and the concept of our our understanding of enterprise uh, when we speak when we speak to consultants and users uh, the, the the language uh, we we talk to them about because as I said at the end of the day definitely we need to improve the real time control data collection situation awareness and analytics on top of that okay this has we, we've been doing this for some time analytics okay uh, an analytics honestly speaking was based on our experience in the in the, in the market was not as important as real-time control and monitoring for many customers today around the region okay this is but a few a, a year ago or two years ago this the analytics part started taking more traction okay they are they want to know the insights of data that they have they used to collect data historize millions of data points in the historian but what does it mean we don't know how we can use it to improve efficiency we don't know uh, what are the kpis we want to read for our operators for operation team maintenance team uh, a reliability team etc etc this analytics part started taking more and more attractions and more and more attention from many uh, water utilities and wastewater utilities around uh, the region because as I said at the first slide, if you remember, we want to maximize the performance of our assets, okay? Through predictive analytics. I want to predict a certain failure before it happens. Is that possible? Yes, of course, and I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit later. We want to empower our workforce with mobile solutions, okay? And definitely, we need to optimize the operation and maintenance processes through an automated workflow. So across the entire urban water cycle today, I want to monitor, I want to control, operate, maintain, and optimize my operations. And that's what we call the decision support system nice good we have scada very well decision support system is nothing but extending this scada okay through through four pillars as i said the analytics and the cloud strategy a predictive maintenance and artificial intelligence the mobility and workflow so these are the four key components that for us represent together or one of them or Two of them or any combination okay can represent a decision support system that the customer might be interested in implementing next to his card so if you have today system platform and center control room you have you are halfway through so you have connected collected what you need to do maybe is to do some data reconciliation or um, cleansing but you are halfway through then the next step is how you use it into these four components or four subsystems. First thing, many customers are asking us today, okay, what's the best cloud strategy that we have or we can implement? For us, we don't mind. Uh, it can be a full on-premise, a cloud fully hosted by the customer. It can be a hybrid. So some component of this of the of the systems are locally hosted, and the others are on a, a commercial cloud. Okay, or it can be fully on the cloud. So it depends on the pain points. It depends on uh, many aspects, the many concerns that has to be studied, etc. Uh, a cloud strategy can be drawn and can be achieved uh, uh, through what we call from from Aviva perspective the Aviva Insight. Okay, Aviva Insight is a, the cloud solution that extend 
extend system platform and the historian data to the cloud. All right, second part, customers might ask, how can I shift from uh, reactive maintenance okay, to more uh, predictive maintenance? Because the active maintenance is just waiting for an asset to fail, then go and maintain it or fix it. Okay, predictive maintenance is predicting before the failure happens. So you are definitely reducing the the opex because you you are increasing the uptime of the certain asset of a certain pump pump, for instance. But by preventing the failure, you are naturally reducing the maintenance cost. And overall efficiency is improved. Okay. And as I said, you have data in this data system. Extend it. Connect this data. Let it mean let it mean something for you, for your system. Connect it to the maintenance. Map between the CMMS data and the SCADA system. Again, the CMMS data or CMMS system is a traditional enterprise system. It is uh, an IT system sitting in the office, okay, used by office, by maintenance uh, department, maintained in servers in the office. The SCADA system usually and traditionally is either in a central control room or maybe in a control room in a plant or maybe simple HMI, okay? So let's extend this data, extend, sorry, extend the functionality of the SCADA to make use of it. How? Let's say we have a pump. A pump might have 10 sensors, I can say, five, six sensors, whatever you wanna call it, okay? Uh, bearing temperature, the motor bearings, the, uh, the pressure, uh, sorry, the vibration, the temperature, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so maybe there might be 10 sensors on it. Those sensors, or sorry, those data points might either be a real-time point, okay, through the sensor, through the SCADA, or might be uh, collected manually, temperature, through a temperature gun, okay? So we need to make sure that we are connecting to it, collecting this data properly, historizing it, and then, using this data that aggregated, okay? This sometimes it might be time-based data. So after 30,000 hours, I wanna create a certain work request, a state based on certain event or alarm, okay? If a temperature, motor bearing temperature exceeds certain threshold, let me do a work order, or a comparison between two different data points, uh, pump power consumption versus the volume flow rate uh, might not be matching, it might, it's there might be way beyond what the, what the theoretical value should be. I can match them and accordingly from the analysis I have in the SCADA system, create work request in the maintenance system and multiple multiple analysis I can, I can make. Most importantly, again, connect and collect, historize the proper data and then use it and extend it. Third of all, today in the water environment, there are certain uh, certain uh, statistics. This is worldwide statistics, not Middle East statistics. 40 to 60 percent of water assets are not connected via automation today. Okay, there are plenty of gorges out in the field okay, that are manual gorges. There are a lot of out of this. This is a typical worksheet or a typical operator round for a water operator that goes and do a certain operation on a, on a pump station, a remote pump station, unmanned, etc. Okay, they go there to the field, they write the values, then they bring it back, someone has to enter it into the system. And imagine, again, how many mistakes they might make. This is if we consider that they went there. Okay, so during summer of August in the desert, maybe someone might choose not to go. 
and he will look at the previous sheet and voila he will copy paste how can you make sure that he went there okay so if today we talk about digitalization well hello digitalization is how can i get rid of this piece of paper and put it in a mobile today everyone has a smart mobile how can i connect this data directly to my server okay not only that how can i make sure that this particular person this particular operator has followed the process of the oper of the operation round he has done one then two then three and then he knows if he reads certain value if it's beyond certain level do this less than a certain level do that how can I make sure that he did he does this? How can I how can I make sure again if you remember this information that the senior operators have in mind is translated into a system so that a junior operator or a less senior operator would make benefit of this all this experience, years of experience that the senior operator might have inside his mind. So a knowledge transfer. So Mobility for many people might mean just a, a report or a dashboard on my mobile. Fair enough, this is good. I'm not saying this is bad, this is very good. But mobility at all in, in, in a water waste water environment or even in an oil and gas environment, these are very common in the oil and gas as well, of this type of uh, geographically distributed systems. You have large desalination plants, for instance. Uh, remote uh, uh, remote uh, wells, etc., where you have plenty of manual operation that an operator has to go and, and manual data that he has to collect. Okay, that's why we say extending or adapting um, an automated mobile uh, mob, mobile round, okay, digital mobile round. Okay, it's a very important piece in the edge to enterprise digitalization strategy. So what you need, you need on your mobile, a graphical user interface where you can, you can uh, enter data, that's data, do the, the rounds or the work rounds. So there is a certain step, he would go from step one to step two, the system itself will show him what to do. Okay, not only the operation round, the maintenance work orders as well, the maintenance round, and the lockout, tag out facility, which is you need to, to do certain things before you start operating on a certain on a certain asset. Okay, uh, might read or might have certain alarms read from the mobile, and definitely, I can say start up and shutdown procedure. This is uh, when you have. When you need to shut down anything, you have to follow certain steps to make sure that you are doing it in the right way. Okay. As I said, very importantly, the training itself, the knowledge transfer is not anymore up to a certain operator whether to give it or not. Plus the knowledge, the, the wisdom is in the system. Very simply, I have my tools, I go and I have this interface on the mobile. This is this interface on my mobile is replacing this sheet. This is digitalization. This is digital transformation. The last piece of paper, piece of uh, piece of puzzle, of the puzzle, sorry, is workflow management. In a typical environment today, we deal with different levels of systems with the different level of people operators maintenance managers uh, planning uh, planning uh, warehousing gis people quality etc etc okay. how can i make sure that i have one uh, uh, let's say i have um, all of these people in different departments using different interfaces and different systems are following the best practice business process that I have in my company or in my utility. Okay, if you leave it to manual, fair enough. ISO is great. It stays on, on papers in a cabinet somewhere. But how can I make sure that my business processes 
are followed from the edge, from data collection, from the operator, to the enterprise, to the CMMS, to the procurement department, to the HR department, etc., etc. Imagine this challenge. Okay, luckily, Aviva workflow does that. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, I'm, I'm not gonna elaborate on this because uh, we have done a few weeks ago a detailed session on this one. Uh, I think uh, Carla can leave the, the link to you on the chat box. You can go and watch it. There are two presentations. Uh, one is theoretical and another one is a demo to show you how you can create a certain workflows and make sure that hey, how you build them and, and follow them well. With that, I come to my conclusion. So, edge to enterprise is not a buzzword. An edge to enterprise strategy is when I say I want to digitalize from my the edge from my sensors to my enterprise systems. So the enterprise system does not stop at the in the control room in the SCADA. It's way beyond that. I can make use of my data to to create more intelligence, more knowledge, and more wisdom, and act upon that and in, enhance my operation efficiency across the chain. And with that, I'm done. If there's any question, Nader, Carla. I'm happy to answer. Thanks, Abdullah. Thank you so much for this valuable session. I hope everyone found it interesting as much as they did. So just we will wait now to receive the audience questions, if there is any. Please, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to type it in the question box. And in the meanwhile, just wanted to remind everyone that, as Abdullah has mentioned, uh, we have started our Edge to Enterprise campaign. This month was the water and wastewater one, while the food and beverage smart Cities and oil and gas ones will follow as well. These campaigns are localized as well are Arabized. So also this webinar you will be receiving an Arabic version subtitled of it soon. So uh, since also all of you or most of you have attended our webinars before, you know that you can just find all our webinar recordings on our YouTube channels. So you can just uh, simply follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channels to stay, to stay tuned with all our news and uh, videos. Links are already existing now in the chat box as well. So uh, to start with the question, question number one, uh, edge to enterprise is great, but how to start or where to start? Um, Abdullah, if you can help with this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, where to start? Basically, big um, question. <laughs> yeah, let me let me go back to this slide. Okay, here. Okay, so again, the objective. One of the the, the main objective is a single source of truth. Okay, so to, where to start is basically to start making sure you are you are able to connect definitely and collecting the data and rationalizing it. Okay, so you need to make sure that you are collecting the data. And make sure that the, collect, the data you're collecting is rationalized, is uh, is, is is validated, etc. Okay, so this is the first step. Because again, if you analyze the wrong data, okay, you'll get uh, a wrong KPI. Uh, today, if you have if you have system platform already in place, you did your 50 50 percent. Uh, or halfway through, I can say. Okay, what what we have seen in many, many, many customers today, even if they have system platform, has plenty of, I can say, not uh, the quality of data is questionable. Some data, okay. So what they what they do today, okay, if they have collected the data and connect connected and collected, they, are, they go through certain projects of making sure the data is very well cleansed and validated before they start analyzing and acting according. So first step is collect and rationalize. Okay, great. Uh, second question regarding the mobile solution. Someone is asking, does it require to download any application for the mobile solution? Yes, yes, this is uh, Aviva Mobile. 
Okay, so here, let me be clear. On the mobile part, when we're talking about the operator rounds, where you can, again, collect the data, the non-instrumented data, where you can ask the operator to follow certain procedure and to follow the correct process that they have and replace their worksheet with their mobile. This is a system called Aviva Mobile, okay, integrated to system platform, integrated with the historian. So the data that you collect on the mobile is pushed to the historian if you are connected to the internet and external connected to the internet. If not, when you come back, that's kind of a uh, certain steps you do and you get the data pushed directly to the one that is historian. So you don't need to put in Excel and et cetera, et cetera. No, it's directly fed from the mobile application, from the mobile database to the Wonder Historian. So there is certain ready-made, okay? You don't need to, uh, it's a graphic user interface, ready-made, you have to configure. So what we do, we take the operator rounds that you have today in the plant and we translate it. Not only we translate it, we, 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 we see how it can be enhanced, okay? Because we don't discover and a, 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 a paper-based paper -based system does not allow you to discover that you might have certain unnecessary steps, okay? But when you are putting into a system, okay, you will be able to visualize it better, okay? And then accordingly, maybe you have the first draft of the process in the system, and then you kind of you start, you start studying it and you start impro improving it as you go. So what you need to do for mobile is to configure, you don't do anything from scratch. It's a, it's, it's a system. It's, Aviva Mobile is a software part of the entire H2 enterprise. And this is an important point I, I, I missed to add. Here we're talking about one solution, one single source of truth, but with multiple components. Okay, but the heart of those solutions of this strategy is system platform. System platform is the one connecting the devices below it, so are the edge devices to the enterprise systems above it. Okay, so Aviva Mobile is fully integrated with the system platform and it, uh, it's at the purpose. Okay, great. Um, I'm not sure if this one has already covered this question. Someone is asking a single source of truth. Can we just elaborate more about this point? Okay. Good, I'm on the side, on the slide. Uh, the single source of truth, single source of truth, again, as I said, you need, you need to make sure that when you are acting upon, when you are acting upon uh, uh, a result, okay, that you analyze, you need to make sure that this analysis is based on, uh, on the correct data. So the, the data that is available here at the edge, okay is well reflected in the analyzed kpi here that upon which you are making actions or you are taking actions okay and making decisions okay this is this is what we mean by single source of truth if you don't have this you will have to depend on multiple systems multiple maybe uh, people different people different operators Someone has data in spreadsheets, some other people have data in the SQL database, some other people have data in PLCs, multiple data sources, and in different contexts, and different things that might mean differently to different people. Okay? And good luck analyzing such type of data and making action, or uh, taking action, making decisions based on that. So that's what we mean, single source of truth. You are making sure that if you read one at the edge it means one at the enterprise it does not mean one plus one and one point one or one point two one is one perfect okay uh abdullah the point that we are uh, running out of time and uh, anyway i just want to thank you for the session i want to thank everyone for attending as well as participating and uh, with their questions uh, we will we will for sure have another session soon with the new campaigns talking about the other verticals as discussed. So thank you everyone everyone for joining and thank you so much Abdullah. You're welcome. Now, just one final message to the system integrators and our partners who are on the call. 
Okay, please free, free, feel free to reach us anytime for any question, for anything that you might need part of this edge enterprise. We're happy to, to take them. If there are end users on the call, uh, I think we're already engaged with many of you uh, on implementing this type of strategy. It's an incremental strategy. Uh, incre sorry, incremental steps to achieve the objectives that you 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 have uh, you have today thanks a lot everyone thank you bye bye